Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode number 86. Stay tuned for today's guest, Constance Meyer. Constance will be talking to us about her explorations into the hard-to-reach places in Florida with her camera and her canoe. But first, remember our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. So if you're the type of person who likes to be shown step by step with pictures and point here and you know press this button, then you will like our classes. We try to start everyone out with the four weeks to proficiency in photography. It's a live class online, okay? So you can take it no matter where you live in the world. We It's live, um, but if you can't make it to the live class, it's also recorded, so you can catch up and do the homework. It's got a lot of hands-on type of experiments and things to do. You'll really like that class. It'll give you a strong foundation in photography. The next class starts June 5th. So check out our website, understandphotography.com, and you will find that and a lot of other classes. Remember, our motto is we simplify the technical. So if you, if you want to try some of our classes, you will really like them. Um, this show, the Understand Photography Show, is broadcast live on Fridays on our Facebook page. So it's facebook.com slash understand photography. And if you come right at 4 o'clock, you just scroll down and you'll, you'll see the live feed. Then we put the video on YouTube, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And it's also a podcast on iTunes, so if you like to listen in the car, that's the way to do it. Subscribe, comment, like us, please. All right, so today we're going to be talking to nature photographer Constance Meyer. Connie has been exploring the wet and wild places of Florida in her, in her canoe for many years and has been to, able to capture amazing images from these really, really cool, unique places. So welcome, Connie. Thank you, Peggy. Thank I'm you for happy coming. Happy to be here. <laughs> and you're, you're moving over here almost, well, not quite to Naples, but Chakalaski. Pretty close, yeah. I'll which be is there. 45 minutes yeah, from here? Yeah, about 45 minutes. And it's an easy drive. It's an easier commute than what I'm used to in Miami, so it's going to be a much nicer commute to Naples than, than Miami. So yeah, I'll be here in another month. That's, full time. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited. Welcome to Collier County. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and if the audience doesn't know where Chocolosky, Florida is, because who ever heard of that? I know, right? Let's <laughs> keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small town. Yeah, it's next to Everglades City, which is um, the northern part of Everglades National Park. So just over a bridge, and you're in Chukalusky Island, and, and uh, surrounded by the 10,000 islands and National Park. It, it's perfect. It's paradise. Yeah. yeah. And, and did, well, you probably know this, that Everglades City was originally the county seat of Collier County yes. before yeah. Naples. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. But. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's still a thriving place, and and um, you know after Hurricane Irma, we got hit pretty hard there. So anybody who's coming down to the Everglades next winter, um, stop into Everglades City and, and um, buy some seafood or spend the night, go out kayaking, give them your business. Yeah, it's a nice, it's cute town. Yeah. I love going down there. Yeah. Okay, so you are a nature explorer. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a good title for you? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess so, yeah. So you've lived in Florida. You said you're from Michigan, like me, <laughs> yep, right? Yep, that's right. But you've been in Florida for 20-something years? been here over 20 years, almost 21 <coughs> years. And um, I've been coming out to the Everglades um, first with a kayak um, for about 14 years now I've been doing that. And, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, the Everglades National Park is, is you know, um, full of campsites and just, you know, it just begs you to go out there and explore. It in a begs paddle you, boat. Huh? It just begs you <laughs> to go out there. And um, so I started doing that about 14 years ago and I thought, wow, this is, this is an amazing place, a uh, wilderness. And um, I was going out there with kayak fishermen okay. and I don't fish. Okay. So um, I had to do something to fill my time, right? So that's when I started to photograph and, and uh, got into that. and. And it was, it was more or less a way to just remember the trips. And, you know, I, I would write about the trips and, and um, record all that. And then it just became more over time. And, and, um, and now I, you know, now I use a canoe. I don't kayak anymore. But, um, yeah. Well, that, so let me it. ask you this. What, why? What's the difference? What's, why is one better than the other? The kayak versus canoe? Yeah. Um, 
for people that may not know the difference, you know, so like me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you asked the good, perfect question. Um, and I know you've had kayak ph uh, photographers on your show. I've listened uh, listened to them talk. So um, the the people that go out in the Everglades to paddle uh, mostly paddle in kayaks, and those are the boats that are long and sleek. You know, if you ever see anybody in a boat and all you see is their waist and on up, you know, and the boat is underneath them, that's that's a, a sea touring kayak, okay. and it's very seaworthy. Um, so it's lower to the water. You're uh, in a what's called a cockpit, and so you're covered, and um, everything is inside the boat okay. except you. Your torso is is out, um, and and that can go anywhere. You know, you can take those anywhere. A canoe, on the other hand, is higher profile uh -huh. and it's open. So, um, you know, uh, it's uh, you, if you go to a canoe rental place, they're going to give you one of those big aluminum boats. I don't know if you've ever been to Fish Eating Creek or Loxahatchee or any of these places. They'll rent you a canoe and they're going to give you those big aluminum boats yeah. and these really heavy paddles. Well, um, yeah, that's you know, yeah, I, the only place I've been canoeing here. Well, a couple of different places, but Collier Seminole State Park does yes, that. Yes, right, exactly. Yeah, on the Blackwater River, I think and, it's called. Yeah, yeah, and it's the big metal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> heavy. Right, and so it's not fun to paddle those for yeah. any great distance. So, so that to most people, that's what a canoe is, um, but. Canoes are like cameras. They come in all different uh, sizes okay. and prices and, and that sort of thing. Um, so the canoe I have is a solo, lightweight canoe. Okay. And um, I, can, I can handle it by myself. You know, I can uh, put it on my car by myself and, and all of that. And so it's open, and you can, you can see inside the boat. You know, everything is open, it's, it, uh, but it's high profile. So everything stays dry. And um, I used the kayak. I think you asked me why I switched or yeah. the, the difference. Right. Why I switched is because I can put all my camera equipment in front of me in a Pelican case. I have access to all of that. If I'm in a, a small, narrow um, sea kayak, I don't have room for all of that, ah. right? So, um, so you're limited in what you can take out or have access to. And it's really important to me that I'm able to, to access all my equipment at any time. And the, the Pelican case is very large, and there, there's enough room for it to sit right in front of me. And um, So and what, what do you bring? What kind of equipment do you bring? Do you bring, I mean, like what kind of lenses and all that? Um, if I'm going out for the day, just uh -huh. to photograph for the day, I'll, I'll always have two cameras, and I, I almost always have my telephoto. I have a 70 to 400. I shoot with Sony, okay. um, 70 to 400, and then I'll have a, a wide-angle type lens. Um, I have a couple different wide-angle lenses. So I uh, and then whatever equipment I need, filters, anything like that. My tripod. Um, I mean, I'll talk about the tripod. I don't put yeah. the tripod always in the boat unless I'm photographing birds. But um, but I have a tripod for long exposure. Okay. Water Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but first, I'm going to. I got some more questions before we get there. Sure. Okay, so you put everything there. Does your canoe ever tip over? I mean, do you <laughs> do you keep it like in waterproof stuff? Right. Or <laughs> I've never tipped over, and um, you and know, alligators the, never come underneath you and flip manatee tip? has manatee. Manatees are what we're afraid of because they're bigger. They're bigger, and you and you kind and of sneak up on them. Uh -huh. And they, they'll be there doing whatever they do, and all of a sudden, and you don't see them until you're like right on top of them, or, or you don't even right. see them. Right. And then all of a sudden, they're like trying to get out of your way, and they come up, and your boat is on top of the, <laughs> the manatee, and, you're, and people have, have flipped from, but from you manatees. But you never have. No. Knock on wood, right? Yeah, because <laughs> I would be worried about my gear. Yeah, well, yeah. So I mean, that I've I've had probably a, one or two close counters with a manatee, and um, one of them was on Biscayne Bay, and the water it was very deep, so the water is very deep. And I see this manatee, and I had um, I think I had just put my camera away, and I see him about six feet away from my boat. I thought oh, I want to get a photograph of him up close, so I'm getting my camera out, and just as I did that, it it 
it dove back into the water, and they're so big that they, you know, the water just splashes everywhere. So this the last thing I see is this huge tail going into the water, and, oh. and all this water splashing all over, and my boat's rocking back and forth. So I eh, get everything back in in the pelican case, and because you know. that's waterproof. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah. you but you usually leave it open. No, no, no. If I've if I've got my camera out to photograph. The Pelican case will probably have something else in there that yeah. I don't want to get wet, and it. so it's locked. Okay. Yeah. But I don't. So I'm you're only in danger of losing one setup. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yes. Unless it sinks. The Pelican case floats. Oh, it does. Yeah, okay. yeah, ah. yeah. I mean, I it's um, there, and and I test them when I buy a Pelican case. I have three or four, four Pelican cases now, and when I get one or any any case we use, because we have small ones for our iPhones and our keys and things okay. like that that we have to take out, wallets. Um, you always test it before you put any equipment in it. Any uh, um, underwater casing that you might use for your camera, you always want to test it first. So I test those things and they float. I mean, oh, that's they, cool. Yeah. So even with, you know, Heavy 30 equipment. pounds of equipment in it, wow. they, so um, yeah. So I don't take the camera out to photograph if there's a chance that something's going to happen. So if, if the weather turns and I've got a lot of wave action, I'm not going to be photographing anyway. Yeah. So everything gets put away. So I don't wow. worry about it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you said that you started with like just kind of taking snapshots mm -hmm. and then you started getting interested in photography. Mm -hmm. So what was your next step? Did you take classes or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I in did. In Miami you have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or did you do online or both? Most people do both. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I did online. Maybe I, I did maybe for some Photoshop or something like that. But um, uh, I did take, uh, I bought my first um, DSLR and took a workshop like right after that. And the, the gentleman that I took the workshop from was a Sony user. And he and I had become, you know, kind of the uh, forum friends, you know. And um, I, I loved his work. Jack Rogers is his name. I just yeah. give him a, um, put his name out there. Because uh, I took my first workshop with him because he's a bird photographer. And, um, uh, and then I've, I've since taken, I've taken other workshops for more specific things. I took a macro workshop. I've taken a landscape workshop. Um, I've taken a class, digital photography class from the university where I work. Um, I took another worked. class. Uh, Barry University. I said worked. Worked. Oh, worked, yes. Because you're just, retired, I right? just retired, yeah. when, when was your last day? Um, yesterday. Ah, I love that. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm so relaxed. And <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to no, lose, no, thank you lose your time. I was uh, just correcting you because yeah. you don't work there anymore, yeah, right? I <laughs> there. Actually, I have to go back and on, um, empty out my office, but <laughs> anyway. That's so cool. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I've taken workshops and, and I'm, I'm always, um, podcasts are a big thing. I, you know, I mean, I listen to podcasts. I mean, you know, online information is, is everywhere, YouTube and this sort of thing. So I'm always looking to learn something. Me too. Right? I yeah. always, I, I like constantly, I go to workshops, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I hang out with other mm -hmm. photographers yes. too. That's yes. And uh, as well, and, and that's camera always clubs and, and that. So thing. it's funny. I don't. I'm not as strict as Joe. Joe Fitzpatrick. His uh, philosophy is he doesn't go on vacation with anyone who's not a photographer. Oh. <laughs> that's nice to have. He's that like, choice. why would you? Why would you? <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's kind of that's mm. a tricky one um, when I go out into the Everglades because we'll go out there for nine, ten days at a time, and I'm the only one. Uh, 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 except for maybe a couple couple times, I'm the only one who photographs seriously, uh. and uh, um, so I may want to do this, and it may not work out that way for you know whoever I'm with, and and so sometimes that's you know, it, but it, it in my mind it's it's in my mind it's always good because I'm out there anyway, and and I'll photograph. You I got to introduce you to the people over here, the photographers over here, yeah, that you can. Go swamping with. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, Naples is yeah is right be for me because you know I've been on the East Coast so long. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I've had one photographer go out with me in, in a boat. So um, an another uh, prof uh, 
photographer who, he's a nature photographer, who um, he paddles, but he just never really put the two together. So he went out with me one day, and that's the only time I've ever photographed in a boat with another photographer. So. Well, Clyde Butcher has a ginu. Do you know that mm -hmm. canoe? And yeah. so does Joe, John Brady, who lives mm -hmm. here. Do you know John Brady? I know, I, I know yeah, his work. He's yeah, he's awesome. Yes. Yeah, yes. he's got a ginu. Yeah. A ginu. <laughs> <laughs> Which I is, I think, a canoe with a motor is, I yeah. think, what it is. It's a little, yeah, it's a little, little bigger than, than at least my canoe, anyway. Um, one day I'll have a ginu. I, I think one day when I'm not able to paddle as much, I'll probably go that route. But I'll tell you, it's nice to have a boat with a motor because I'd love to go out to, say, for instance, Pavilion Key, um, which is only nine miles away from Chukaluski, and just be able to go out there for the sunset or capture some of these storm clouds that, that come up in the distance and, and be out there. So if I had to paddle out there, I'd have to commit to spending the night, and, and yeah. in the middle of the summer, that's not always you know, oh, something you want to do, right? I can't even imagine so, the mosquitoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. so, now, do you have favorite locations yeah, in the um, Everglades? I do. I mean, I, I love the beaches. I love the islands. Um, I have a couple islands that I, I really like to get back to often. Um, the way the sun sets, certain islands are better than others, certain times of the year, so, you know, it all depends on that. Um, there are places that I know where I can photograph birds in great number, um, so I'll, I'll look for doing trips where I can, you know, kind of yeah, put you that got in. some nice pictures of the white the, pelicans the, in there. The white pelicans are always, you know... They're always, always so far there. away. When I, you know, yeah. but maybe on a canoe you can get a little closer because we always yeah. have a power boat and you, yeah. you yeah. can't get close to them. You they can kind of sneak up to them, but they still, you know, um, when I photograph, it's interesting, when I photograph the white pelicans, I always like to get them facing in the same direction. You know, That's get so that, cool. Right? Well, they do that because they're all starting to, they're eyeing you up and they're saying, okay, it's time to go. So they're all starting to kind of line up and, and walk away. And then they get into the water, and then they kind of swim away. Or if you mm -hmm. really scare them, they fly away. But, um, but anyway, yeah, you have to be really careful. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah. I've never gotten yeah. a good picture of them. And then, of course, when they go out without me, they always get good pictures. It's the way the way the life works, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how long? Now, wait. How do you find these? Like that pavilion? I, I never heard of that. I've yeah. lived here for a long time, and you were talking about Fakahatchee Island. How come I never heard of that? <laughs> I know the Fakahatchee Strand and all that, right. but I never knew about the island. And yeah. you said it's right there off of Chakalowski, right? Well, it, you know, it's it's miles miles. You know, I mean, if you what the the best thing to do is to look at the Everglades National Park map. Is and that part of the Everglades the National Park? The Fakahatchee Island is not. You have the 10,000 Islands National Wildlife Preserve, or mm -hmm. Refuge, I think it's called. I get yeah, those I think it is, up, too. Right? <laughs> they, that's north of the park. And um, the park boundary uh, is just south of Fakahatchee Island. And then you have, if you go further north of there, you're in the Marco Island territory, right? So, Which is the largest of the 10,000 islands. Yeah, I learned and that. the most populated, <laughs> right? So well, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we generally don't go up that far north. We're um, <coughs> in the preserve. So south of Marco Island, um, you have several popular islands for camping. And um, now power boats camp there as well. I mean, you have fishermen out there all the time. So um, Fakahatchee Island, you just have to look on a map and find it. Mm -hmm. you know, for me to try to tell you where it is would be really hard right but now. But you find out from just camping sites or? I, you know, I think just, just having done it for so many years, you know, and you just kind of, I don't know, you just kind of figure it out. And um, you learn from, you know, the people who've been going out there for years and years. It's usually the fishermen okay. that know the area. and. Um, you know, and just talking to people about uh, where they like to go. And so that's out of the park. And you can go there without a permit and camp. You can camp on Fakahatchee Island. Okay. And um, there's a lot of history there, a lot of history. It was, um, used to be, a, um, I think they, it was like a, a fish, uh, um, 
they processed fish there. Oh, I think. okay. And they, and they actually, uh, some people lived there and children lived there. And, and so there's a graveyard and some other things that you can go and you can see there. And, and when you get into the national park boundary, there's also campsites that have a lot of history. And you'll see, um, you'll see the remains of homesteads. Uh -huh. So you'll camp at a place where somebody used to live okay. and used to farm and like Watson's place. Okay. Maybe you've heard the, yeah, about yeah. that book. Yeah. yeah. So we camp at they, Watson's They have place. a play they do here. Uh, that's kill, right. Killing Mr. Watson yeah. based on a book that somebody wrote about. Yeah, small that guy was a bad guy, man. Oh, he was bad. <laughs> he was a bad actor as they called him uh -huh. back then. But um, uh, so you, you know, so when you look at the, the National Park map, it'll show you where all the campsites are. And so anybody up north who's coming down to spend a week down in the Everglades, they'll research the area and they'll say, well, we can camp here, here, and here, and maybe they want to do the wilderness waterway. And um, so they figure out their routes and all of that. And that's, you know, and that way you kind of, you kind of learn where the islands are or where the campsites, the backcountry campsites, the cheekies, there's all kinds of places. Now, how do you, do you, do you just use a GPS, a compass? How do you get around and not get lost? <laughs> because the 10,000 islands, everything looks exactly the same. Oh, I know. Just a bunch of mangroves, right? And, and yeah. And, um, and so when you're in a canoe, you're, in, you're seeing that for hours and hours and so hours. So how do you not so get lost? Photograph, photograph that. Because, they, yeah. I mean, people yeah. get lost out there all the, all time. the time. Yeah, how do you time. Have you ever been lost? Um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> yeah, of course I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, I think, I think uh, uh, you know, we do, a, we do our due diligence before we go out there, so we try, try to avoid the worst case scenario. So maybe we've strayed and um, got ourselves back on track quickly. But, um, but GPS is, uh, is, is, of course, very helpful. And uh, I use a GPS in my car all the time now. You know, I just got so used to using it. But a map and compass is always in my canoe. Okay, um, so you have a map, you have a compass, and you have, you, and do you just G use your phone GPS? Or do you have a... No, a, a G a GPS. However, um, I always have my phone, and as a backup, there, there is an app, it's called iSail. Okay. And S A I S A I S A I L. Okay. And they also have one called I Hike. Um, for land, I Sail is for marine, and it you can you can download maps of any area where you know you're going to go. You okay. can download it, and so if you go out there and you find that maybe your GPS stopped working, or you know something happened that you you don't know where you are. You can get that phone out, turn it on, and the GPS on the phone will work without any Wi-Fi signal, right? Mm -hmm. And you just bring up that app, and as long as you downloaded that map, it'll recognize it, and it'll tell you where you are. Oh. You'll know exactly where you are. Ooh. And so you can use that to, to get yourself out of trouble. I mean, that's kind of a worst-case scenario, but um, so I always have that, and especially when I go out by myself, into say the Big Cypress or some place where I just kind of wander around, I always have that as a backup. Um, but Do you go uh, out by yourself a lot? When I photograph just for the day, yeah, I'm almost always alone. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't get anybody else to go out with me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so so yeah, uh, you know. So a GPS is really important, but a, a compass. I always have a compass with me, and you always have backup. You know, you just don't want to get oh, stuck out there. I would hate there. to be stuck out there mm -hmm. with all those mosquitoes, man. I know. That's the worst, it right? Is, yeah. I mean, it's scary about snakes and alligators and stuff, but this mosquitoes, the mosquitoes are... Mosquitoes are the worst, oh. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, and we've, we've had close calls with that. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't even think about it anymore, but, um, you know, I just... I go to so many places that I, I'm familiar with, I just keep going back to a lot of the same locations. And I have favorite beautiful. islands I like to go to, and um, I know where I can find, maybe find birds, this sort of thing. Well, okay, so let's say you're on, on an island. What are you looking to photograph? Um, you know, 
The one thing you have to understand, when you're in the canoe, you're only going three miles an hour. You know, it's a very slow ride. And I spend hours just looking at mangroves. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, mean, I, and they look the same. They look the same. <laughs> you know that. And, and uh, I'm surrounded by water. And, um, you know, in, in the sky, the sky could be totally blank. In the wintertime, it's, you yeah, know, no you, you may get cl storm clouds, but yeah. mostly you don't. Yeah. So it's a, a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of blank space. Um, and I, you know, I just, I, I, I use that time to study the, the mangroves. I use that time to study the water. Um, and, and that's really where, I think, where my photography came from. I just, you know, it's like, how do I photograph this? I got to figure this out. And um, it may not always, you know, be what I want it to be. I mean, the dramatic light doesn't always happen, but I'm usually on the water when I do have dramatic light. So, um, I don't know. I just uh, have have found some things to photograph in there somewhere, and and just keep at it. And um, uh, you know, I now I you know I'm a little more discerning about photographing mangroves. I don't just shoot anything anymore. So I look for certain things. But um, it's it's kind of uh, I don't know. Unless you've paddled for a lot of uh, hours at a time, it's kind of hard to explain how that you know how that photography comes about you know what inspires somebody to to photograph when they're just s surrounded by the same thing over and over and over again so you don't get bored out there <laughs> looking at the same thing over and over for i guess not i don't know maybe i'm just weird or something but i you what know what goes through your mind while you're out there and looking at the same thing for hours and hours <laughs> oh my god i probably anything and everything i mean it's I, you know, I don't know. I, Is it I just like peace for you? It's yeah, like yeah. You know, um, it, it's it's how uh, you know Harry Truman. He's he back in 1947 gave a dedication speech to the Everglades National Park, and he just described the Everglades perfectly. It's it's just this land of tranquil, quiet beauty, and um, and that's how I feel every time I'm out there. And I don't, you know, I don't know how many people get to experience that truly yeah. experience that and um and to be able to do that on a regular basis and um even how often do you go out there back back when you used to have a job yeah <laughs> how, how uh, weekends and holidays so right pretty so much all the, every week yeah i mean a lot i mean we have we have biscayne bay on on the east coast and okay. biscayne has been a very important part of my photography um it's not remote you know and you don't go out there camping unless you find a tree house that somebody built mm -hmm. you know in which they do <laughs> oh. oh yeah <laughs> but anyway um uh you know i i can go to biscayne bay and i'll be right next to miami and i'll feel like i'm in the wilderness you know totally surrounded because i'm alone and it's just water and <laughs> mangroves and and all of that and so i think just the the feeling of that of being in the wilderness and having and i think the water is is the other element that yeah, makes it more I love so? being on the water. I know it, it's very. I don't know what it is, but it's like ah, oh, you know, yeah. like just everything, just sort of. I love being out in the Everglades too, though. But yeah. I've never really. I mean, I guess because I've only th been through those mangrove tunnels or whatever you want to call them right. on a powerboat, they just seem so boring, you know. <laughs> Where I'm when I'm hiking, it doesn't seem boring at I, all. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. So there you go. It's ah. it, canoeing or kayaking would kind of be the same analogy. I mean, when you're hiking, you're going two, three miles an yeah. hour. Um, and so when you're paddling through those mangrove tunnels, you know, you actually see, um, you see the spiders. You see a <laughs> you little see, more because you're going slowly. You see the crabs, you see uh, Maybe I wouldn't be so bored if I was going slow is what you're saying. Yeah, well, you might see more or you might yeah. see it differently. Yeah. You know, uh, in a powerboat, you're just, you're just going. Yeah, we don't yeah. go fast, but right. we go. Yeah. We go. Yeah, but it's it's a lot slower in a canoe, I guarantee you that. So you yeah, so you look at things a little differently and just that feeling of being out there alone is um something that I want to replicate with my camera. You know, I wanna try to capture that and how it feels. So it's not just taking a picture of a mangrove anymore. It's it's like what what is you know, what is behind all of that? is what I try to capture. So do you prefer like 
you know, a big landscape, or do you like go in more for the details? I know one, some of your pictures are kind of in between. I love you had a silhouette of birds, which was really cool mm -hmm. that you sent, and uh, you had a lone mangrove that was yeah. really awesome. Yeah, that's a. Those are Biscayne Bay shots, by okay. the way. A nod towards the East Coast. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, I think you know the wide the wide scapes. How I feel about that. Um, is and you know this is where maybe the the use of the camera comes in to the discussion is like you the wide angle lens that we tend to use when we want to go wide right we want to mm -hmm. we want that that wide shot of the sky the water or whatever it is I find that that doesn't work as well for me um, at, for example I, one of my latest self-imposed projects is to photograph off the Tamiami Trail. So, okay. because now that I'm living in Chukaluski, I, I, I make this drive a lot, and you do too. So, the Tamiami Trail is beautiful. It goes through the big cypress and the Fakahatchee, and I see these beautiful scenes. And so, I, I set up to photograph, and I think there's no way I can capture that beautiful hardwood hammock that's 200 feet away from me and is totally surrounded by sky and there's nothing else mm -hmm. um, with a wide angle lens because what am I going to get? I'm going to get this tiny little clump of trees and nothing else but sky. Uh -huh. So I've been using my telephoto lens a lot for landscapes okay. and waterscapes. Okay. And um, so that allows me to kind of go in more intimate. So I guess to answer your question, I think I like the, the intimate yeah. shots better. But a big old tree. You have to be pretty far away, huh? Yeah, well, if you're on the Tamiami <laughs> Trail, you have things that are far away. Yeah, that's you know, true. You know, and, and but they're not usually alone. There's usually trees behind them or something, right? Yeah, I, yeah off, way off in the distance. I've found a few locations along the trail where I've identified uh, a certain tree or a certain gathering of trees, and, and so I've tried to kind of hone in on them. But they're, like I said, they're a few hundred feet away, so I don't want... A photograph of just the sky. I yeah. want the trees, so I have to, um, you know, I can't get in there to, to get closer to those trees, so I have to kind of zoom in on them. Yeah, so I'm, if you see somebody standing alongside the Tamiami Trail with a <laughs> the tripod and the gimbal head and the, and the telephoto lens, that's probably me. <laughs> I have to introduce you to my friend Chris because he, on his truck, he's got like a platform so he can stand on it when he's shooting off the, you know, he pull I over mean, off the side yes, and yes. he'll be up high yes. shooting, which is nice. I need to talk to him because I'm getting a truck um, in another month and that's, that's exactly you what do I that? thought yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. I'll introduce you. He's my. He's awesome. <laughs> he's my swamp friend. <laughs> I tell him I own snake boots, so I'm willing to go in there. I, I have the boots. I can get in there. He loves and, to go. Yeah, he likes. He's awesome. into orchids. We go orchid oh, yes, hunting yes. when in the summer. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I've got to see my ghost orchids and all that yeah. with him. You know. <laughs> and isn't it amazing when you see them? How small they are. I know. I thought they were going to be big, a little tiny thing like. I know. It's like an amazing to have people that know how to find them. He knows how. <laughs> he, yeah, well, he knows great. how to find all the different orchids. He's yeah, like really awesome. into it. He's really cool. That's, that's great. A great, great friend. So that's interesting that you shoot your landscapes with a telephoto. And you mm -hmm. said it's, how, what's the range that, of your main one that you use? 70 to 400. Wow. So those shots, I found that I do a lot of those shots uh, around 100 to two, 180 maybe millimeters. So I don't go full in, but I do a lot of other um, tiny landscapes, I guess, um, on the water. Uh, so again, you know, you've got nothing but wide open space. So I start looking for those more intimate shots, and so I'm looking for grasses in the water and their reflections. And if you have some color in the sky, you got that color in the reflections. And and uh, so that's um, you know, so I'll set up. To, to photograph those and, and I have a macro lens, a 180 macro lens and I'll use that sometimes but I, I don't know, I'm, I'm loving that 70 to 400, that just seems to work really, really well. You know, everybody has a favorite lens. Yeah, I, I think know. That's my favorite, yeah. so. I like that range. I have a 70 to 300 mm. that I love, I love the range, but that's, 70 to 400 that's is a even Sony. better. Yeah, that's a Sony for you. They, they came out with that. When they what? came out with that, that was like, that, that was. And you are know. you a, which, which, which camera do you have? I use the Alpha 
A7s. Okay. It's a crop censored camera. And that's and that's what I've been Chris, using. Chris, who I'm going to introduce you is a, he's got an A. I forgot, but it's a crop. It's light. Here I am lugging all my heavy stuff, and there's this big guy with a little tiny camera. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, I haven't got the mirrorless though. I oh, haven't got the mirrorless. mirrorless. Yeah, yeah. Mine is 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 uh, the regular. It's a DSLR. Uh, you know, S yeah, okay. DSLR, and, and and it works for me. I mean, we we get gear in these sometimes, and I and I have been eyeing that that A7 R3 for several yeah. months now, and and maybe it's you know, not that I, expensive. It's like two thousand. Well, twenty one hundred because it doesn't come with a charger. Isn't that weird? The Oh, that's interesting. You have to I, buy the charger separately. It's like 88 bucks. Mm, that I don't know. Isn't that bizarre? But anyway. They have, the latest one, I think, is a little more expensive. I think is the, it more the three that? is is like 3000 3200 or something like that. I don't um, know. You had to look because I, mm. I just looked because I... I just had a week from hell equipment wise. I have a problem with one of my Boy. primary lenses, one of my cameras broke. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh my gosh. Maybe it's time to go Sony because all my guests are Sony, it <laughs> seems like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the mirrorless really picked up. I, uh, that, you know, I think that's what got people into yeah. it. But I've been using Sony for forever. You know, yeah. That's what I, I started with. And, and um, I, you know, I just I kind of had to wait for them to come out with the lenses that I really wanted. Yeah. And I used to use, and I still do, the Minolta Prime lenses. Um, it, it wasn't until, I think, 2008 that they came, that Sony actually came out with their telephoto 70 to 400 and some others. Um, what a nice like that, range. So. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about photographing from a canoe. We're 40 minutes in, and I forgot to ask you. Uh, <laughs> <the canoe>. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about the Tamiami Trail. <laughs> The canoe. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, what do you do? Fast do shutter do speed. This, right? What? Tell me. Tell me. Give me the tricks. Okay. So, um, so, so, uh, wildlife. I do photograph wildlife. So, for that, um, I, I'm, I'm almost always sitting in my canoe. So, okay. I, I don't find myself getting out of the canoe and trying to photograph wading birds. That tends to scare them away. So, I, I, you know, stay in my boat. Um, the boat is, is. Um, is short enough, uh, and it's you know it's not so imposing. I, I can get relatively close to birds sometimes, but the key is to keep my boat steady. Right. So I have a system. If I can't um, steady my boat with my own feet, and you see I you know I have very long legs, so I can get my um, feet on the ground if I have to. But how do it, you get your feet on the ground <laughs> in a canoe? One foot on one side, and one whoops, sorry, one foot on the other. Your side. Your legs are that long. Well, the canoe's not that big. It's small. You okay. really have to see it. Yeah, because yeah, I'm still visualizing the big metal yeah, thing. Yeah, right. I, think. I know. It's it. No, it's it's. Um, anyway, I can I can do that, but um, but if I can't, I have. Um, they're called stick it pins that you can put in the water and anchor your boat. Okay. And so I have a system where I can put the pin right next to the boat on either side. So I have one here, one on the other, and if you can imagine, it wedges the boat. So the boat can't move. Okay, There's so now is that, do you have like hooks on the boat? Yeah, um, good that, question. And then these, what'd you call them? Stick it pins. Stick it things? Yeah. You stick them through the, through the, not, not something on the boat? Not even that or? sophisticated. I just take a rope and I make a loop and the loop just hangs over the side of the gunnels of the boat of the canoe. What's a gunnel? The gunnel is the edges of okay, the, of okay. the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, is, is it, I think, yeah, right? <laughs> so okay. the gunnel's right. So I, I have a, a rope. It's roped to the, um, there's a thing called a thwart that goes across. So I can tie it to that and the loop hangs over the side. Okay. And the um, the pin will go through that loop. Oh. So it's right up against the boat. And I have one here in front, say on my right, and the other one is behind me on, on the left. And so the boat is wedged. Okay, so they're not us. directly across from each other. They're on an angle. Exactly, oh. yeah. And so the boat is, is stationed where the, it, like if there's a tide or any amount of wind, it has to come directly towards the boat or directly behind because I don't want the boat rocking back and forth, right? I just want the water to come straight at the boat. And the boat will just sit steady. So you decide, okay, so here's, let me think, see if I'm following you. 
So you, you're like, I'm going to stay here. So you're going right. to turn the boat so that it's facing or its butt <laughs> is to the way um, the current is going. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. The bow is towards the, the current. You, right? you like the my terminology? The, yeah. the butt. <laughs> the butt. And the butt is behind, right? What is and the butt called? The, the, the bow and the stern. Stern, okay. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I feel like I'm getting tested on, on boat. <laughs> 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 I'm getting it okay, right. So, and yeah, so, okay, and then yeah. how long are these? I have three of them, and, and, and two of them are, um, uh, I think they're, they're five feet, five feet maybe. I think they're a little shorter than um, than me. And then I have one that's longer, maybe seven feet. And do they fold up or something? No. So you have to just keep these long things mm -hmm. in your boat. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And is it hard, like the seven foot one, to get? The seven one's a little cumbersome. And the only time I use that is I have one location where I photograph birds that are nesting. And um, I, I have to stay a distance away from them. And so I station my boat um, in water that could be relatively deep mm. or it could be shallow, okay. depending on the tide. And so I have that long one to help me with that. Um, so in the situation where I want to photograph birds, and I know that if there's enough wading birds, I can stay in one location or the nesting birds, I can stay in one spot. Once I station myself, um, I can, you know, I. If I'm using my bigger prime lens, I will get out the tripod and put it in front of me. The gimbal head is on the tripod. The and tripod I'll, is on the boat or uh, in the water? It's right in front of me on the boat. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the only reason why I'm using the tripod is when I'm using a big lens. And I might have the, um, the vertical grip attached to the camera. So now I've got, what, like 20 pounds of gear, and I don't want to have to hold it. So that's the only time I use a tripod actually in the boat. So you just have the legs real short? Yeah. Because I mean, you're sitting mm, in the boat, yeah, right? exactly. But you've got the gimbal head, so it moves. Mm -hmm, and it's right in front of me. So I'm but just... It stay, but it's still steadier yeah. than mm -hmm. you could handhold it. Oh, Even I Even though so. yeah. it's on the boat. Yes. But because you have the boat stuck. Yes. Or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah. It it's has pretty to be steady. Not perfectly steady, Not I would. Not perfectly, but it's pretty, pretty good. good. It's, it's better than me hand-holding it in the boat. Okay. Okay, because it's either hand-hold it in the boat or have it sitting there. Right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, as long as there's no wave action, I mean, if the conditions are not right, then it's not, you yeah, know, you then can't it's not do worth it. the trouble, right? So, um, so that, that seems to work. It's, you know, it's not ideal. I wish I was standing on land. A lot of times, I wish I could set up the tripod and, and do that. But do you stand, put the tripod in the water ever? And yeah. So when I photograph long exposure, um, like water that scapes. mangrove, wasn't that a long exposure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually in the water with the tripod. If the, if I can get out of the boat and set up my tripod and have me standing in the water with the tripod, I'll do that. And, and do, you, do you find, isn't the water kind of too soft, I mean the bottom too soft or? Um, in, on, on Biscayne Bay and a few other places where I've done that, it is, but not too soft. Okay. I can, you know, I might sink to above my ankles and the tripod, as long as I, I know that, you know, I can just really stick it in there nice and firm, um, it might be in maybe a half a foot or a foot of mud, uh, but usually not. You know, in Biscayne, it's, it's pretty packed. It's pretty solid. So, um, so it's almost like being on a beach. Okay. And so I can set up like that for, for long exposure. Now, there's one location where I photograph, and this is when it gets really fun. Um, I can't get out of my boat because the mud is, is too soft. And I would sink, you know, I'd sink up to my hips if I did, and right? we'd never um, see you again. Right. Yikes. And I'd be gone. My How do you know that? Everything How, do you know gone. that from bad experience? Um, I know that from having stuck my paddle in there oh, and thinking okay. there's no way I'm going to get in there. Right? <laughs> okay, good. I just wondered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in Florida Bay is another example where I would never get out of my boat because okay. it's like quicksand. Um, it... <laughs> Anyway, it, it, so knowing that, you're not going to be able to get out, but you still want to do a long exposure shot. And, and um, the location I go is Big Cypress, and um, 
so I, uh, so I do the same thing with my boat. I get it stationed with the, the pins, uh -huh. and I take my tripod and I put it off to the side. Now, obviously, I have to know what I'm going to be photographing first, so I have to figure that out. I have to get in there and say, okay, the sun is going to be here, and this tree is here, so I'm going to be here. So once I get set up, then I can put my tripod in the water um, with either the gimbal head or a ball head, depending on which lens I'm using. And um, that will go into the mud, and I have to really push to get it in there, and sometimes it sinks a foot and a half. And once I know it's firm and it's not going to move, um, then I can get my camera out and very carefully attach it. And, it, and I'm good to go. So you're shooting from the canoe. I'm sitting but in your the cameras canoe, in and the, the cameras wow. on the tripod, and it's right there. And the other nice thing about Sony is the LCD panel swivels out, okay. so it, I can swivel it towards me, so I it may not be right in front of my face for me to see it. And I, you know, I use live view on that, and that allows me to compose my shot and, and set my exposure and, and all of that. Wow. And I'm sitting comfort comfortably in my canoe. <laughs> but does the canoe ever bang? Oh no, the, it doesn't move because you got it stuck. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah, and I make sure it's not going to bang you know, into because the if tripod. I'm moving yeah. around, it'll move the boat. Right. Right. So I make sure that there's no. Um, that you have enough space. Yeah. There's no. Uh, like how much space between the tripod and the boat? An inch, maybe. That's it. So I know. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, because those stick-it pins are not going to allow that boat to go anywhere. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a picture of, like, I have, of that? I'm interested to see the stick-it pins. I have on one of my videos. Um, I, it's not an instructional video showing you how I set it up, but you can see it. You can see how it looks. And you have a YouTube channel? I do. What, what's your YouTube channel? Um, it doesn't have a URL. I think you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to, to have a so. URL. I don't know. But, but it's Constance how, Meyer just Photography look for your from name? a Canoe. Yeah. Okay. Um, Is that your thing? From a Canoe? From a Canoe, yes. That's cool. That's my website. I like from it. From a Canoe. But, um, but I hope to get more instructional videos because it's hard. I'm sitting here trying to uh, explain it to you and, it, and I'm realizing how, you know, it's kind of you have to, to picture it, but yeah. this is a podcast as well as video, so we, yeah, it's good. I mean, I, f I feel like I'm getting it, Okay. but I would like to see a picture, but yeah. we, you know, because we are going to put, we're going to put some pictures and, and then all your links in our show notes. Okay. Understandphotography.com for our, get, for our listener viewers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so I figured that out and, and sometimes I'm standing in the canoe. And I got a very long um, tripod that allows me to, to get eye level with that camera. So imagine the same situation, but instead of sitting, now I'm standing. And that is, that's, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> when, you're holding, when you're trying to get the camera out of the Pelican case and you're standing in the canoe, to get the camera onto the tripods, so and you're not afraid of the canoe tipping over? No, because the, again, the pins are going to make sure really that it doesn't that go anywhere. It's really that secure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the water is very shallow where yeah. I am and most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it you just have to be very methodical about it. You know, so I'm very careful. And I just do one thing at a time and, and don't get ahead of myself and make sure once that camera is secure on the tripod, then I don't worry about it. I know it's okay. And I can do whatever I have to do, get a filter out or whatever I need to do. I know that that camera is secure. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of I work. Would, you have to be so patient. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing that I'm learning yeah. from Clyde Butcher is he's so patient. Yeah. It takes him, you know, half an hour to set up a, to take one picture. <laughs> oh, and then he doesn't even get to see it for, you know, a week or something. <laughs> and what, he goes to Spain for a month and takes 130 photos? Is it something like that? I can't I mean, believe that. Yeah, that it's blew amazing. my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I would have taken 130 in the first hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have deleted about 129 of them. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Good point. That's the thing. You know, my mentor, she always says, you know, especially when I, because I was one of the first professionals to go digital in this area, and she used to yell at me, and she's like, you're taking so many pictures. Oh, if that was film, it would cost you, you know, however much money. And 
I'm like, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I know. But yeah. then you sit there and you don't want to edit them all. Yeah. So you yeah, should yeah. be more careful if you don't. Because yeah. I don't enjoy sitting at the computer just no. doing the boring part of editing. Right. I like the fun part of editing where you're making something look cool. Yeah. When but you just going through one. the pictures and deleting the bad ones and yeah. straightening the horizons and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Yeah, I agree. And so when I'm shooting, like, Come on, pay attention, yeah. you know, and yet I still have to straighten a lot of horizons. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, the mangrove islands, when you're out there, you think you have a straight horizon, but it kind of tricks the eye, and you're looking at the photo going, God, I thought I had that straight, but then you're looking at it, and it looks crooked and, and all of that. But, but I find that the, the more I have photographed, the fewer photographs I take. Uh -huh. So I don't know if you've notice that yourself but as we kind of progress we tend to get a little more at least i have anyway i tend not to take as many photos um thinking ah, i don't know if that's worth you know taking a shot or uh, maybe we're just a little more discerning i guess yeah about yeah our photographs. well you you, kn you probably know more what you want too yeah i you think know? yeah i think so so it's I don't spend as much time deleting anymore as I used to. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Joe has a Lightroom class online. And uh, I, without him teaching me all the Lightroom stuff, I would be going crazy because yeah. I'm so fast at editing. I was fast at editing before Lightroom, though, because the Canon, Canon has really good software that comes for free with the cameras. And hardly anybody seems to know about it. Artie mm. Morris, do you know who Artie Morris is? Yeah, a bird sure. photographer. Yeah. He uses that software. Yeah. It's amazing software. Yeah. Wow. But because I teach, I had to learn Lightroom because everybody learns, everybody right. uses Lightroom, so everybody I had to know it. Lightroom. But Lightroom yeah. was hard for me to learn. Yeah. But it is really good software. It's just yeah. not very user friendly. <laughs> I have to say I've never I've not used Lightroom for editing. I I just I use Photoshop. And oh really? And so what do you it. use? Bridge to mm -hmm. sort your pictures and all that? Yeah, yeah, ah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's Lightroom. I use Lightroom to download the the images and then I close Lightroom and I go right to to Photoshop with the editing, and that's it. That's that's all I do. Huh? Yeah. I find that fascinating. <laughs> I because I fought Lightroom so hard, but now that I know it, you know I. Yeah. Some people think it's easy. I just didn't think it was easy. I mm. I was losing my pictures all the time. In fact, just recently, you know, they they changed from Lightroom CC changed into Lightroom Classic, and yeah. then the new one is called Lightroom CC. Right. Yeah. And my catalogs got messed up. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, no, I don't crap. like crap. How do I find the catalog again? But I yeah. I, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I've given a lot of workshops, and and I I have, I have done some Photoshop workshops, given workshops, and most of the people that I run across, um, they have never tried Photoshop because they're afraid of it, or I've also gotten the comment where they say, well, that's not really for photographers, that's more for graphic designers, so they still have that misconception or that the idea that Photoshop is 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 too much it's more than what a photographer needs which is true um photoshop is a lot more than just photo editing but um i you know i always tell them you know the they ask me well why do you use photoshop and my answer is is because of the layers the layers well, what that else you would you use? use what else would i yeah. use lightroom right oh yeah, but you you can't just use Lightroom. You have to have Photoshop too. Yeah, I right, think. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I don't think yeah, Lightroom does everything you need. I mean, some right. people do, but you can't get into the nitty gritty stuff exactly. in Lightroom. And and Lightroom doesn't have layers. I don't think, right? No. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it's that you don't have that non-destructive. Yeah. Um, you kind of leverage. It's, Lightroom's hard to get your mind around. <laughs> because what they do is they have recipes, so you're actually not working on the picture. You're working on Kind of like an adjustment layer, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. it's it's easier to do it. In, it's way easier to do it in Photoshop. That kind of stuff. Mm, it's the, interesting. The layers, yeah. Because yeah, I I know, you know, when I first started teaching in two thousand nine, I started. I you know a lot of hobbyists take the class. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time, Photoshop was seven hundred dollars. Yeah. But I didn't like Photoshop Elements. It was like 
Yeah, hundred dollars, but I didn't like it because they didn't have layer masks. They right. had layers, but mm -hmm. no layer masks, and there were like complicated ways to mm -hmm. figure it out. But I, you know, I'm not. I'm a simple person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it was Elements Photoshop Elements 10 when they came out with the layer masks mm. in Elements. So now for the hobbyists, I say just buy Elements. It's eighty dollars. Oh, yeah. It does everything a photographer needs. Exactly. It's easier to learn than Photoshop. It's way easier now. I don't yeah. know if you've seen it lately. It's like cartoon stuff and <laughs> click here and click there. It's so right. easy. Um, and well, that sounds great. I mean, yeah. if it has layers in the masking, then, you know, that, that's, that's perfect for, for somebody who's starting out. And um, you don't have to, now it's, cheap, it's cheaper, but it's more expensive to have Photoshop because now you pay a monthly yeah, fee. Yeah, but, subscribe, yeah. But more people have Photoshop now because it's $10 a month instead of $700, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. So. It's a little bit easier to access now, I think. But, um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't, yeah, Photoshop, I, I spend, a, I probably spend more time editing now than I have in the past because I've learned so much more and you, you learn the tools and, um, and how to be more proficient and efficient at it. And so I've, I've devoted a lot of time learning Photoshop. And, what and, do you, and do you have any favorite it. things that you do on a regular <laughs> basis in Photoshop? Um, Probably, you know, selective masking, uh, mainly for dodging and burning type um, changes. You mean like darkening the sky, but not mm -hmm. the... Yeah, or combining more than one image. You know, I'll have two or three images and um, using luminosity masks or some type of selective tool to, to get that greater dynamic range. Um, and, you know, I, I use curves all the time. I mean, almost always, either to selectively adjust or to the whole image. Um, I probably do desaturation more than saturation. Really? You know? So selective desaturation, I use that a lot. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I learned the new, um, I started using the Orton effect. I if you've know. heard of that. I have heard of it, but I don't know what, I don't remember what it is. What is uh, it? You know, the landscape photographers are all about that dreamy, yeah. uh, that dreamy look. And it's, it's uh, applying uh, the Gaussian blur uh -huh. in a way that it makes, um, makes the, the landscape look uh, not blurry, but just kind of soft. Oh, dreamy. Dreamy. Yeah. Dreamy. <laughs> and that's like the coolest thing now, you know, but I, you know, I, I, it probably isn't. I probably found out about it way after everybody else did, but, um, but I, I, you know, I played with that and I liked it, you know, just a subtle, just very subtle changes is, is really the key. And, you know, you could do 15 things edits to your photo and each one individually you probably wouldn't notice it yeah right um, but together that's that's right. really what, comes what you're trying to achieve and so that was just one little thing that I started playing with now you give workshops mm hmm I do tell us about your workshops um, my workshops are um, advertised as individualized workshops okay. so I, I um, I allow people to, to contact me and, and say I'm coming down to the Everglades or the area and, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to spend a day doing this, that, or the other, or a half a day. Um, and, that's, and I cater to that. Uh, so now I don't go into the national park because I am not uh, a, um, the permit a licensed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, have the permit and it's... right. It's not the easy paperwork to do. is insane, and it's more expensive now, right? Oh, I, I don't I remember. How. It's expensive. Yes, it's expensive, mm -hmm. and the paperwork is monthly. Yeah. We only go in there a few it's times a year, and we have all every month. You got all this paperwork. It's yeah, crazy. Anyway, a lot of bureaucracy. Um, I do. I do work with one of the the tours, the tour companies in the Everglades, but um, and so I will work with them. But where? So where do you go? So what I when you the, don't have the you don't go into the national park. Where do you go in Fakahatchee or? Um, uh, let's see, Fakahatchee. Because uh, Big Cypress has an even more expensive permitting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. That's over a thousand dollars a year, I yeah. think. Most of most of where I go are places closer to Miami. That's why oh, because I that's, really want to yeah. get to know Naples because we have a lot of I city parks. I would go out and explore with you now that it's summer. Excellent. Let's do it, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a canoe. <laughs> I know. I, I got to learn. I don't. I didn't even know what the butt was called. Stern. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I'm going to change the name for now on. It's going to be the butt of the, of the boat. But uh. yeah, anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, the city parks, Biscayne Bay, um, Biscayne Bay shoreline is perfect for sunrises. Um, further north, we have uh, Boynton Beach was one. I just, I just did a workshop up in that area. We went to Wakadahatchee. Wakadahatchee, um, yeah. There was another little uh, hidden away park that was just beautiful. Green Cay is up yeah. that way. That's yeah. pretty. Yeah, so you don't need permits for any of those right, places. Right, exactly. What about, do you sell your work as I do. fine art? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I, I do art festivals, and I did my first Naples art festival this year. Which one did you do? The downtown one in March. March, in March 23rd, was Naples. 4th? Was that Naples National? That was the da was downtown Naples. I think it was called. Hmm. Was that Howard Allen? N was uh, it through no. the Naples Art Association? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think there's like three of them through the Art Association. Yeah, we have. Downtown. Well, we have one every month, which is a really good one. It's Art called in Art in the Park. Park. Yeah. 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 And then they have two big ones: one in January, one in March. Right. And January is the. Um, the national one. That's I the think. Naples yeah. National. Okay, I couldn't remember yeah. which one was which. So what's next in line for you? Yeah, so so now that Moving I'm... Moving over here. I know, right? <laughs> I'm going to be in a West Coaster now. That's pretty You're going to cool. love it. Yeah, I, I do love it. Um, well, you know, I mean, now now I'll be able to, to really... Um, in, in, and you have so many guests on your show to give advice about marketing. And I'm just, I'm trying to soak all that up. And that's the part of my photography that I'm really gonna try to work on. And yeah, because now you're gonna have some more time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, there's going to be traveling, you know, because I'll be living in an RV full time. Wow. And uh, that's, that rig is gonna, is gonna, is, it's, it's not gonna, gonna go be here places. during hurricane season. Ah! <laughs> no more of that. We're gonna go, um, go north and see what I can do up there. I'm from Michigan, right? So, um, I'd like to go up to the UP and spend some time photographing in other locations. You know, get I to just, uh, I don't remember who or what or when, but I was doing some internet surfing and came across somebody who wrote a book about photo spots in the UP, which yes. I was like, oh, I would love to do that, yes. but when, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to Michigan this summer. I'm speaking at uh, the, I just learned it's called Swimsy, Southwestern Michigan Council of Camera Clubs or something like really? that. Really? So that's but that's in Holland. So I'm not going to okay. make it up to the UP. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, have time. Yeah, down the southern part. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. It's going to be exciting. I haven't been back to Michigan in a really, really, really long time. It's so a beautiful state. It really is. Um, so I'm looking looking for. And I lived in Arizona for a while. So I, I'm oh, looking forward to going there. back out west and and spending time out in the desert. And uh, so, you know. Um, but I'll be here in the winter. You know, this is going to be my place, and I hope to just you know, really, really pour myself into the photography and... How exciting. And what an exciting new chapter to your life. I know, right? It's, yeah, it's pretty, I feel very lucky. I'm very lucky. Oh, yeah. well, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate I, you coming over, I, even though it wasn't that far. I know. Now that just you a, live here. It's just a <laughs> short commute. Oh, my God. I know. I thought you were coming from Miami. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you, Peggy. I it's, really uh, had a great time. Thank I'm you. glad you're here. And thank next you. week on the Understand Photography Show, Joe Fitzpatrick is my guest. You guys all know Joe at this point. We're going to talk about HDR photography. And I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching episode 86 of the Understand Photography Show. We will see you next Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, if you would like to watch us live. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.